Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beaded Celtic wire work bracelet. And this is what it looks like here. So, this is the woven part you could say of the wire work with that knot in the middle, that Celtic inspired knot. And then we've added the beads in along the sides to give it a bit of extra interest, but also obviously add some colour if we want to. So we have the knot in the middle as the centerpiece and then going out to the sides. So that's what it looks like. And then it sits very nicely on the wrist here and it's also very comfortable to wear. So you can see you have that knot as the centerpiece with the beads going out to the side. It gives a really nice look on the wrist. So this is the copper version that I made here. I'm going to show you how to make in the tutorial. But I also made a silver one just to show you how different they can look. You see that looks like that. So I just used silver wire but then the beads I've used the same size and shape but I just used some different ones a different colour just to show you can really give a different effect and look depending what materials that you choose to use but this is the bracelet I'm going to show you how to make so if you want to learn that then keep watching so these are the materials I'm going to be using for this bracelet here first of all we need our wire and these are two different gauges of regular round copper wire first of all I have a 0.8mm this is going to be the base wire and the strength of the piece and then here I have my weaving wire which is a 0.4mm we're going to use this to weave around the 0.8mm and then the beads that I'm going to be using here are these 6mm rounds and these specific ones are some blue coated hematite gemstone beads you can always use whatever ones you want to so let's get our materials together and let's get started and then for the lengths of wires that we'll need to cut here I have three lengths of about 40 centimeters each and these are of the 0.8mm so these are going to be the base wires we're going to do this twice so this is just for kind of one section and then for the 0.4 mm wire here, so the weaving wire, I'm going to be working with that off the reel. I just find that easy because it's hard to know exactly how much we need. And this way you can also keep better control of it because there is quite a bit we're going to need. Now then what we need to do first of all is start weaving here. So what I'm going to do is get my weaving wire ready. And like I said, it's still attached to the reel. But what we also need to do is leave a long tail. So I've measured from the end about one and a half meters in. So this is where I'm going to start weaving from. I'm going to keep hold of that. And then the rest of it here is attached to the reel. And then we need one of the lengths of the 0.8 mm that we cut off, just to begin with, to attach it together. And on this, we want to start about 15 centimeters in from one end. Because what we need to do is weave across the midsection on these base wires. So this is where I'm going to start from. So grab hold of this, both of them. And then I first of all want to attach the weaving wire here. So just wrap it around the base wire once just like that and just make sure it kind of stays roughly in place you can also move the weave a bit after if it's moved a bit out of place then I'm going to grab in the next base wire place that above the other one again making sure the same length tail so they become nice and even and on top of the weaving wire there and then I'm going to go straight into the weave that we're going to do and this is the diagonal wire weave so I'm going to then take my weaving wire there is coming below and then go across the top of both of them and push it nice and close every time I make a wrap I'm pushing my wire close and then come down behind then I need to come up between the two base wires that I just wrapped over the top of and then again push that down and that also helps push the weave close together and then I'm going to bring my last base wire Again, place that in the same way. That's now the new top one. And then take your weaving wire across the top of both of them. The top two wires there. Come down behind and then up between the two wires you just wrap across the top of. So just like this. And then again I'm going to use that and push downwards against the weave that I've done so far. Then the final wrap in this little section is across the top of the top wire, base wire alone, so it's just around that single one, and then down behind all of them. And that's basically one full round, you could say, of this weave. And then we just want to keep repeating this. So I'm just going to show you again here. It's coming down behind all the base wires, the weaving wire, go across the top, and then come down between the bottom two. So we're just wrapping around the bottom wire on its own, like that around towards the front again over the top and now down between the top two base wires we're wrapping across the top of the bottom two like that push it down 
come behind the back and then come up between the two that we just wrapped across the top of and again use that to help push it down across the top of the next two and then down behind to come up between the two we just wrapped across and keep pushing your weave nice and tight close together it makes it much more even and neat looking and just around the top one on its own and then down behind all of them again and then we'll basically just start again and continue the weave just like this So here I then have my weave when I kept going and this is about eight centimeters long and that's going to fit perfectly for that midsection that we're going to do with that knot. So we have this ready and obviously we want to make this again so we want two of these. What I've also just done is on this end with the wire, the weaving wire that we used to make the weave with, I cut that off the reel again the same length as the beginning here just so we have those two tails to continue with after once we've made this midsection here. And then we need to start shaping our little sections here. So we do that one at a time. So just take one here and then we want to start from the middle. So we're shaping this weaved section and I'm going to start bending this into a curve right in the middle. But what we need to make sure of is that it stays flat. So we're shaping this but keeping the actual weave nice and flat. So just take a bit of time working with it. Make sure we keep it exactly how we want it to. So basically we're going to be bringing the two ends together here and end up crossing them over each other. So I like to kind of, as I'm moving my sides, hold down the mid part there and then go to the other side. And I'm going to try and keep the sides kind of straight. So just have a curve right in the middle, getting them towards each other. And just keep working with that until they get closer to each other in the exact same way here. So now the ends are getting much closer to each other here and we have that curve. And you can see the lengths of the wire, the ends rather, are wanting to start crossing over each other, which is what we want as well because we need that crossover point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my left side here over the right one and just making sure, it's not too crucial, it's just more making sure how we cross them over and under. We have a front and a back to this weave. So on the back you can see you have a length of the weaving wire going straight across all of the base wires. Whereas here we actually have the pattern that we want. So we're just going to keep going here, moving them closer and crossing over here so we get that crossover point. And also remember to bring the weaving wires with you. So something like this, making sure that especially this curved part stays flat and we'll just bring this further over and the other one further under. And then it's just a matter of really manipulating it as well until it sits just exactly how you want it to. If this tends to want to curve a bit, you can also use a pair of flat nose pliers and gently help flatten it out. So don't squeeze too hard, but just gently make sure the base wires are lying flat next to each other. So here I then have the loop ready how I want it to look and then you can see you have that left leg crossing over the right one for this one here. So what's really a matter of figuring out is exactly where to put that crossover point because we've got to have two of these and they've got to be able to intertwine. So basically the crossover point and the other one is going to be inside this loop and the same the other way around. This crossover point is going to be the inside of the loop on the other one. So that's what we want to make sure to do that there's space enough here. So from the top of the loop here down to where the crossover point is, there's about two and a half centimeters. So you can use that as a guideline, but then also you want to make sure to make the size of the loop big enough or small enough as well. So this crossover from the other one will fit inside of it nicely without too much space, but also not too tight. Once you have the first one done here, you obviously need to make the second one as well, make that into this shape. So once you're making that second one, you can always refer back to the first one. I've already made mine here and keep kind of comparing them to make sure they become the same size or as much as the same as possible. So they look like that. And also what I've done with the second one here is I've actually crossed the right leg over the left one instead. So in the knot, how it's going to end up looking is it's going to be even and the same on both sides, but 
how we're going to intertwine these, it just makes it easier if we cross them over opposite. Because it's wire that we're working with, we can't just kind of intertwine it as we would do with cord. Obviously, wire reacts quite differently. So cross them over opposite just to make it easier to intertwine them together. And to also help with that, what I just want to do on both loops here is prepare them as well by just opening them up a little bit in that crossover section. So just gently kind of pry them apart without losing the shape. We want to keep the shape we have. Just open them up a little bit like you would open and close a jump ring. So it looks like that. And just do that with both of them as well. So then to connect them together, I'm just starting here with the loop where the left leg is going over the right one. And I'm going to put that in this direction here. So that's going to be kind of, you could say, my right side of it. And then I'm going to grab the other one and bring that in here. Again, you can see that we opened it up a bit. And then what I want to do is start intertwining these. Now, it can be a little bit tricky and fiddly, but just take your time because it is wire. It's going to react differently, like I said. What I'm then going to do is take the leg that's crossing over and put it down through the loop of the other one. Get it all the way down there. Then obviously you can see here we have the weaving wire as well. So we've got to always remember to bring them with us. So whenever I'm bringing something through a loop or up and down through something, always bring that weaving wire with you. So just kind of put the base wires through and then just pull the weaving wire through gently with it. Just so it's part of it and it'll kind of naturally follow after that so something like this here we now have the weaving wire coming out in the same direction so that's now coming down through that loop of the opposite section and then what we need to do here is make sure they're going to lie in the right position so i'm going to take the loop that i put one leg down through and basically force it so the crossover section in that is getting right down into the loop and then the other end of it so the loop part you can see you can kind of see the crossover section from the opposite one through it so it's basically how it's going to be lying but obviously we need to actually intertwine all this so right now the legs from the other one is coming they're both coming behind the front loop there and now I want to start intertwining it more so we need to get the other legs here in and out through those loops so they're intertwining and actually connecting fully. And to be able to do that really, I just want to make sure that this area first of all lies a bit more flat because as you can see here where the crossover sections are, they just line on top of each other because it's wire, it's not gonna kind of nestle together like cord would. So we need to make sure that happens by forcing it. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm kind of, the one that crosses over, it almost put a little curve into it like that and then the one that crosses under, you also want to put a bit of a curve into it. So they're still obviously lying on top of each other, but it ends up being just a bit more flat because they're kind of curving around each other a little bit. So that helps because obviously they need to kind of intertwine in and out of each other, but inside the loop of the opposite one. So we really need that to make sure that that's possible. You can see already it lies more flat now, but then what we need to do is get the other side with it. So we have the top section, I'm going to open that up a little bit more and then bring that around to the front. And you can slowly start to see it coming together because really all that's left to do now is intertwine the legs of the other loop there. They're laying in the right position now, but obviously they're kind of just on each their own side and not intertwining through and interlocking. So that's what we want to do now. So first of all, I'm just going to get this in the right position fully. Because once we kind of have intertwined it all, it's pretty much fastened the way it is. You can't really do much more with it. So I want to make sure it's exactly how I want it to be before I do that. So just like that, you can see I've opened up the legs on this side a bit more because it gives a bit more movement. And then I'm going to hold it down. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to start with the back one on this side here. Got my finger behind it. And then I want to basically start pushing this a bit into the curve. Or into the loop of the opposite one. So it's starting to come through there almost. That's basically what we're doing with those two. But right now we just have to do it one at a time on this side. 
And now here comes the part where we really have to, you could almost say weave a section in and out because that's the only way we're going to be able to do this. Make sure it lies flat. And then this section here, I'm going to just lift it up a bit more. Again, make sure you kind of don't really lose the original shape. Then I'm going to bend it back because then I need these tails to go back through that loop, but on the upper side of the leg that's going behind. And this can be a bit fiddly because it's why we're working with and obviously you want to try and make sure it keeps its shape and you don't make too much of a bend or kink in any other wire. Pull that all the way through to the other side. Then again I'm just going to double check here. Make sure it still stays looking how I want it to look. And then we just got to remember that because we brought that tail or leg through, we also got to bring the weaving wire with us. So I'm just pulling it through here, nice and gently. That loop as well. So it kind of pretty much just follows the path. Like that here, you can see we're almost getting there. But then we have to just do the one final intertwining section. And I just want to make sure that everything is how I want it to be. So if I need to tighten anything up, I'll do it now. So for instance, right there in the middle. Because then what we need to do is the same tail that we're just, or leg that we're just working with now, we put down through there. We need to come up through the same loop, but on the other side of the leg that's crossing underneath. And that's why we needed to push that leg a bit up through the loop. So again, grab the tails of the base wires, kind of gently bend them backwards and now come up through the back and pull that all the way through nice and gently here. It might take a little bit of working with. And get it all the way through here, making sure obviously it's the weed section. And now while I'm here, I'm just going to bring through the weaving wire as well, just so it doesn't get in the way or get stuck somewhere. And also the more you kind of compromise the wire, the more it might end up breaking at some point. So try and avoid that as well. Get it all the way through so that's out of our way. And then we just need to do final adjustments. You can see it's gone a little bit out of shape up here. But I'm just going to kind of pull it through more and force it down from the other side. Because that's where it went out of shape a little bit. So you just want to basically keep working with this now. Make sure that that goes down while you're then bringing it up again on the other side here. It's almost kind of snaking it through. So just keep working with this until you're then happy with how it looks. And it's pretty much as symmetrical as possible as well. And this is now what mine looks like here. You can see it's also interlocked really nicely. There's not really any movement in this. So obviously we have the legs now going out to each their own corner pretty much. We want to bring them back in and get a bit more control over them. So just make sure as well to smooth them back out. Because obviously we worked with it all so we'll probably gone out of shape or got some bends into them. So just smooth them back out again. And then what I want to do is bring them in so they're going to end up lying next to each other on each end of this knot. So I'm going to put my fingers on each side right on that crossover point in the knot. The first one here that I'm working with and then I'm going to gently bring this back in, kind of straighten it out pretty much to come straight up to the side and just do a bit at a time. Then I'm going to take the top one and do the same thing, put my fingers on it and then bring that out to the side, making sure that I'm keeping the knot there that doesn't go out of shape. So we're getting these closer to each other. Because this is where we need to do the sides of the bracelet and also add in our beads. So we also need to get them in the right position. So just get them to the point where you then can take a bead for instance. And then that's going to fit nicely in between the two sections of a base wise there. So it's got a nice perfect fit space wise. You could also purposely make it a bit bigger if you want to add a bigger bead. That's completely up to you. But I'm just going to make it fit perfectly to fit that 6mm round that I'm going to be using. And also making sure that it goes straight out to the side. And obviously the other side, do the same thing. Make sure 
they're coming out straight opposite each other and continuing that knot. So now that we've done the knot, we need to work on the sides, like I said, and then we need to just get our wires ready because as you can see here, they're not all even where the weave ends. So I'm just gonna make sure to do that and all we wanna do is we have the weaving wire left that we're just gonna keep working with. So it's already attached here and I'm just gonna pick the exact same weave back up. So that means just doing one at a time and just going straight back into the same weave as we used for the sections in the knot there. So I'm gonna do a few rounds on say the top one here first of all, get that out a decent amount and again you can kind of use your bead to help measure because you can see the hole in the bead, line that up and then you'll know roughly where to stop weaving, keep running away because it's going to be about halfway of the bead obviously, the, the hole is in the middle because that's where they need to add the bead using these weaving wires as well. So you just want to get to that point with both sides so both the top and the bottom there. And before I then just add in my bead here what I just want to do is make sure that these sections of the base wires are in a bit of a better position because right now you can see one is coming over that loop and one is going under so that means if I just leave them like that the bead isn't going to sit completely level so what I just want to do is the one that's going over here I'm holding behind that loop and I'm just going to press it against it a little bit so down like that and then straighten it back out so kind of it curves around that loop and the same with the other one I'm just pushing upwards instead and then flatten it out a little bit so you can see that aligns them much better just like that there and then the bead is going to sit just perfectly in between those so now I'm at the point here where I want to add in my bead so what I'm going to do is we need to take the two weaving wires here so the one from each side of them and you want to get right to the end both of them here then I'm going to take my bead and first put it onto one of my weaving wires and just down a little bit then I'm going to take the other length and put that through the same bead there but in the opposite direction so I have my two ends coming through just like this then I'm just going to start pulling it down obviously do it gently because we don't want to kink the wire or damage the wire or anything if we can help it so just bring it down by pulling your wire through and say here for example what I just want to make sure to do is avoid something like this where if we keep pulling this could turn into a kink so just make sure to undo it and then pull it through nice and straight then what we'll make sure to do is obviously the wires are laying properly so I'm holding it like this and also just want to mention again every time we weave like we do on this edges after the knot we want to make sure that the same side of the weave is always pointing towards us so what I would call the front because the two sides are different so just make sure you keep paying attention to that so you don't swap back and forth because then it would end up looking different but then the top one here we need that to come down behind the base wires as if we we're going to start another weave another round of the weave and then the bottom one here that's going straight upwards so basically we need them both to come behind then I can keep pulling the bead and the wires through the bead there closer and closer until it comes all the way up and then it's going to fit perfectly in between the two sections so just pull it gently because you don't want to damage the wire like I said or strip the wire if you're using a coated wire push it through and then as you pull them nice and tight here, the bead is going to fit just perfectly in between those two sections and sit just like that. So that's the bead in place but obviously everything is still loose and we have the weaving wires and we need to continue our weave as well but also adding in more beads. So to do that basically all we're going to do is pick up the weave again. The wires have just now swapped places you could say so the bottom one is turned into be the top one and the other way around. So you just pick whichever one you want to start with, it doesn't matter. Make sure your weave is still nice and tight. And then just, this is coming down behind all the base wires on this section, and you just continue the weave in the exact same way. So there's nothing different just because we're adding in that bead. Picking up that weave again. And then the same thing on the top here. This 
and just bring it all the way around to the side. It's coming through the bead and then we just go straight into the weave. We just separate out the wires a bit by picking it up, going around the bottom one first of all. And then into the exact same weave and that really tightens that bead in place as well. And there you can see, and it's going to look very seamless that the beads are almost just floating there in the middle. Now obviously we want to make our way for the next bead, but you need to make sure you have the proper spacing between them. So for these materials here that I'm using, I'm going to make six rounds of the wire weave here on each side. So continue one full round until you then go back to the bottom here and start again six of them on both sides until I then add in my next bead. And with these materials that fits perfectly with the spacing of the size of the beads there. So it's going to be perfect fit through the next hole of the next bead and just continue like that adding six of your rounds of the weave in between each one. And obviously continue all the way to the end however long you need this bracelet to be. You can either continue to the end and then go to the other side here and do the exact same thing or you can swap from side to side. That's completely up to you because if you don't really know how long you want it maybe it's a good idea to do a few beads at a time and then swap to the other side and then swap back and forth like that until you then measure the full length. Obviously mine is what the clasp is going to be as well. But then like I said just do the exact same thing on the other side and then we're going to keep adding the beads until we reach the length that we need. So I then kept weaving here and also adding in the beads along the way. Then after that very final bead that I've added, I've wrapped another four rounds of the same weave here on both sides. And then what we just need to do is get rid of our weaving wire because we're done using that now. So I'm just flipping it around here. I've got the one wire left. It's coming around the top wire on its own. Then I'm bringing it around to the back and making sure it lies tight against. Then I'm going to take my flush cutters here and what I want to do is then cut it down, so we'll cut off the excess, right below that top wire. So it's going to basically be a little bit of the wire sticking out. Just get my cutter in place. Cut it off. Like that. And then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I want to squeeze that very end down. So basically that means at the very end of the wire that we just cut off, I'm going to actually be tucking that into a little gap between those two base wires. So that really gets rid of it, so it's not going to catch or scratch on anything. Do that with all the lengths of the weaving wire. And now to finish off the rest of the wire, so obviously we have all these base wires left, and also make the end so we can then attach a clasp, what we're going to do is I'm just going to gently grab hold of all three at the same time, so on one side and just gently move them a little bit in towards the other side and the same with the other one here just so we get a little bit more of a curve you could say a natural transition so just something like that and then we need to start basically intertwining these wires so I'm just going to first of all separate them out a little bit so I have kind of the top one here is laying behind for now. Obviously we need to intertwine them, it's just the easiest way to work with them. And then what I'm going to do first of all is the three bottom ones here. I'm going to take the top one out of them and work with that one first. And I just want to make sure that they are nicely pulled in. So I'm going to take that and then I'm going to go and use that and intertwine between the ones that are coming on the bottom below here. So I'm going to bring it just gently down between the first two. You can see there. And push it all the way. And then I'm going to come up between the next two. The other two wires here just kind of try and ignore them for now. You can also gently push them a little bit out of the way. So something like that. And then bring that back up. and then have it come out towards the opposite side there. And then we can always just adjust it here because we're basically intertwining these wires. But because it's wire, it's obviously something hard instead of cord. So we have to make sure we pull them up and down a bit like that. So we actually make sure they intertwine and become somewhat close to each other. Otherwise there'll be much more space between them. So I've pushed one from the bottom there a bit upwards and one coming from the top push that downwards a little bit to make space for the next wire we now have to bring through. 
also I'm going to push the first one here. So then the second one, which was really the middle one out of the three bottom ones, I now need to bring through. And I've basically already got the other wires ready here. So we just bring it through in the same way. So it's intertwining between the other ones. And what you can always do as well is use pliers, especially some chain nose, because you can really get in there with the tip and grab just where you want to grab. Make sure to push it into the exact position that you want it to have. Something like that. And then again, we can push the other ones here in the opposite direction to get ready for the last wire. So we we'll create that little bit of space. And still, use your pliers whenever you feel necessary. So like that, and bring the last one then in between over to the opposite side. So you can really see they're now starting to intertwine with each other. And then it's really just a matter of getting them all into position exactly how you want them to be. To make sure everything looks as nice and even as possible. And we're getting there slowly. So we're going to end up basically having a bit of a tip out here where the outer two wires you could say are crossing over and under each other. So once you're happy with that, you can just flatten out the wires again. The ends here. So all lays flat. So just like this we have all those wires intertwining with each other. And then to secure this in place and also get rid of the excess here, what we need to do is get these lengths of the wire kind of wrapped around so they can be secured nicely. So I'm just going to flip this around to the back because the first wire here is coming around the top of the other wire. So I need to make sure this kind of wraps around the outside and then over around towards the back like that there. And then the next wire is coming around behind so that I just need to bring around towards the front. Over the top just like this here. Again, always use your wires whenever you feel necessary. You need to adjust the wire a little bit into position because it can sometimes be just easier to get a grip with the pliers rather than your fingers and also to control it here. So brought that around over the front and basically push it down against so you have it wrapping around except obviously we can't really go any further. So now I need to cut off the excess. So the first one here I'm putting it towards the back again and just need to make sure this is in a bit of a better position actually. It's gone a little bit off course. So something like this more I think. Like I said just maneuver it with it until you're happy with it. There we go. And then I take my flush cutters and again I want to cut the excess off here but so I have just a little tiny tail left after it's wrapped around that we can then tuck away. So cut off like that. And then take your chain nose pliers again and you just want to, you can see that it's sticking out. Obviously that's going to catch and scratch on things and it's not secure enough. So I just take my pliers and just push that end down and then just also gently continue basically wrapping it around the wire that is wrapping around already. So just like that. And then you want to do the exact same thing with the other one here wrapping around the front. Cut off the excess so you just have that little end left. You do the same with the two on the other side, the bottom two. So we're just then left with the two right there, the tip. And then as for the final two wires here, one we're also going to finish off in the same way. So I'm just going to take the one that crosses over. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm then going to just take this around towards the back again. And finish that off in the exact same way. Cut off the excess. So basically it wraps around the other base wire. And make sure to squeeze that end down. Always make sure of that. And then we have this one left. 
and this is then where we need to use this to make a loop so we can also obviously have a clasp and close it securely. So I'm going to straighten this out so it's basically going to come pretty much straight out from the point there. And then we need to just make a loop with this. So what I'm going to do is put it towards the side, take my chain nose pliers here and then make a bit of a bend, an angle, something like that. And then I take my, I just use my six step bell making pliers here, place them right on that angle. You can also use round nose pliers. I just like using these because you know you're going to get the exact size loop and the same size if you're using the same step on the bail making pliers here then wrap the tail all the way around so you get a full circle and then I take my chain nose again grab hold of the circle and then take the tail and start wrapping that around the little space that we left underneath the circle there right up until the point of the connection between the other wires. So basically fill in that gap and then once we have that I'm going to take my chain nose again, cut off the excess like that and like every other time always make sure to squeeze down the very end so that's not sticking out and catching or scratching on either skin or clothes. And that's basically now the loop in place and we can then use that to attach our clasp to. So then the only thing that's left to do, once you've finished off both ends here the same way, and I've also just attached my clasp and extender chain, is to shape the bracelet. So you can either kind of fold this around something that has the size and shape you want it to have, or you can just use your fingers. So what I'm gonna do is start in one place and then gradually work my way from one side to the other and put more and more of a curve into it. So you don't just want to go into one place and make a big bend because that's going to kind of put it out of shape. Whereas here what we want is a nice and gentle curve and then obviously ending up in the shape so it's going to fit around our wrist. So you just keep going like this back and forth until the two ends then meet up and obviously this is kind of the mid and the front part of it. So this is then what the bracelet looks like once I've finished shaping it here. And obviously we then have the clasp, so it's going to be nice and secure to wear. While you then have that nice detail with the knot and then obviously the beads adding colour, but going all the way around and just finishing the piece off. So that's what it looks like. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you very much for watching.